and a presentation uh, which we are going to uh, receive. And I want to, uh, first of all, welcome Jim Boyles, a dear, dear friend of the, of the General Assembly. Seriously, turbulent times began for me 41 years ago when I came to this place for my first meeting of this council. And the, the topic under discussion was church union. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the turbulent times have gone on and on and on. I am uh, pleased to uh, be here simply to introduce the people who are going to make the presentation. And we have, we have a number of guests, first of all, from St. Andrew's Japanese Congregation in Toronto, and uh, people from the, the Japanese community who have come and uh, to observe, to watch, to critique, perhaps. And, uh, but our presenters are here, Joy Kagawa, author known to many of you through her books. Joy was a young child when her family were interned uh, during the war. And Lynn Shozawa, who was born in one of the uh, internment camps in the interior of BC. And Greg Tatchell. Greg has done a, a great amount of research uh, on this whole issue of the Anglican Church and the internment and the, the consequences of that. So they're coming to tell their story and uh, to seek your support in uh, finding some kind of uh, reconciliation. I got involved because Joy is a member of uh, Church of the Holy Trinity in Toronto and I worship there and she called me up one day and said she wanted to know about reconciliation as in truth and reconciliation. And, uh, and as our conversations went on over months and, and years, um, that question uh, was relevant to the Japanese uh, people of this country and particularly to the, in this case, the Japanese Anglican Canadians. So that's what we're going to hear about tonight and uh, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, for having us. Uh, thank you, Jim, for that introduction, and thank you to all the honored delegates for having us here tonight and giving us an hour of your time. Now, the story we're telling is symbolized in many ways by the very first slide you see. And as we go through the presentation tonight, you're going to see that seven or eight times as sort of a chapter marker to remind us of why we are here tonight, not just a building, but also a community. We have a, a short five minute video at the end that will show you that video, uh, the life of that community uh, back in the 1930s. All those people you see there on the front steps, you're gonna see moving around the church on an Easter Sunday, on the day that they first opened that church, April 7th, 1935, built by the Japanese Canadian community. So the four words on the top is, a journey of justice. And you can't embark on a journey of justice unless there's an injustice to begin with. There was a letter that came from our bishop to Holy Cross Church about 12 years ago. And I'm paraphrasing a bit, but what he said is if the Japanese Canadian Anglicans were dispossessed of their churches in the Second World War, by the Diocese of New Westminster, that would be a serious injustice. Now the operative word in that sentence was in, because if you asked anybody, nobody knew. All the principals that were involved in this, in the executive of the Diocese of New Westminster, had all passed away. So this story started, restarted in 1999 with that letter from the bishop, and in many ways it's ending here tonight 14 years later, when we believe we've been able to remove the if. We think there's no longer an if involved, that it was a serious injustice, and we want to share that story with you here tonight. 
Instead of starting at the beginning, we'd like to start with the apology that Bishop Michael gave to Diocesan Synod <coughs> two years ago, May the 15th, 2010. And it's short, and I'll read it out loud even though you can see it there, because the words in the Japanese-Canadian community were considered very powerful. And the start of the healing process, 70 years after the churches were sold. So I'll come over here and read it out loud. We wished we were technically confident enough to have the bishop up here doing this, so we apologize for that. Now, this important story has now come out of the darkness and into the light. I believe we need to accept the truth of it so we can begin to deal with it and so that we don't repeat it. On behalf of all of us, I want to apologize to Japanese Canadian Anglicans for the sale of Holy Cross Church and the Church of the Ascension after the Second World War. So the presentation now will show what led the bishop from 1999 when he said if to 2010 when he apologized for the sale of those two churches. I think most of you know Bishop Michael because I didn't put his picture up there as a way of thanking him for that apology three years ago. I promise I won't read this. It's an awful lot of words. <laughs> But I wanted to put it up just to show you that this is the memorial plaque that we've designed around this project. And we're going to use that as sort of our seven-point agenda for this evening. Uh, when we're finished with the presentation, we have four handout sheets for you, and this will be included as well. So not the plaque, but a copy of the plaque. 